that can just score whenever he feels like scoring. I mean, it's certainly, as a coach, it's certainly helpful, but as a team, too. And, and the reason the Maver- Mavericks have been so good lately is they just have defended. I mean, I think that's been a thing the last few years they haven't done as well. But this year, when they're locked in and really loaded on defense, they've been so good defensively, which makes their offense even better. And for a day like today and hopefully tomorrow and hopefully Tuesday, they're going to have to have all those pieces working together. The Great American Conference, going into their conference tournament, they knew that only a one team was going to get in. Only one team in the tournament, whoever won the automatic bid, and that turned out to be Arkansas Tacky, a team that's very good defensively. They were first in the conference, 65 points given up per game against the top offense in the Northern Sun Conference. 86.5 86.5 points, so something's got to give. And one thing we saw in the first two games from the MIAA, they play great defense. Fort Hayes State, first in the nation. We're talking nation when it comes to points allowed per game. And Northwest Missouri State, second in the nation when it comes to points allowed per game. Offense is big, but I think to, to win a championship, to win six games, a lot of times it comes down to defense in the NCAA tournament. Don't, don't all coaches, whether it's football, basketball, they all say that defense wins. And, you know, it, your offense comes and goes because your shooting always comes and goes. You know, if you're a good shooter, you shoot 40%. But defensively, you can always count on, you know, and I think defense to me is about how you collectively do it together as a team. When you do that as a team and you do it well, then I think you have a chance to beat anybody. And that's what the Mavericks have been so good at this year is they played really well to, together as a team defensively and they rebound the heck out of the ball which in a game like tonight they have to do well you talked about malik willingham he's the guy that gets that offense going he only scored in single digits one time this year he had eight points against dakota state the reason he had eight points because the starters rested a lot in that game that was kind of a flawed victory for minnesota state early in the season back in november 21st at that conference tournament he had 33 in the quarterfinal win against Sioux Falls, 15 against Southwest Minnesota State, and 21 against UMD to be named in tournament MVP. Tyrese Willingham and Justin Egans were both named to the all-tournament team out there in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. And Rick, I'm looking around. I'm just kind of soaking it in right now. This place is packed. There's still seats if you're on your way. But get here quick because this is going to be a fun atmosphere as we're going to tip things off here in just a few minutes. And I I don't know how many games I've seen, Aaron, but they, this game has the tallest official that I've ever seen, I think, <laughs> in my life. I don't know how tall he is, but he's got to be a good 6'8". Wow. You're absolutely right. Yeah, he's the tallest tallest one I've, I think I've ever seen. I got a feeling that... He might have played some basketball I, back in the day. I think he probably did, yeah. So it, it's, uh, wow. I hope he's a good official because he might have been a really good player. Malik Willingham, you know, besides all the accolades that he's received so far this year, well-deserved. He's not just a, a point scorer. He's led the team. And one guy, you know, I kind of called him the X Factor before. The Northern Sun Conference Tournament, Justin Egan. So yeah. I want to pick on another X Factor. I want to go with Dylan Peters as the X Factor here in the Central Region. Dylan's led the team in rebounds 10 times, steals 11 times. You're talking about your starting forward slash center, and 15 times he led the team in blocks. And I think Dylan Peters, again, a guy who will play for Truman State. What's too loud? You can't hear me? I can now, yeah. Okay, you could hear me for a second? Well, I could, but not as well. I mean, okay. I like to listen to your voice. That's why. <laughs> Here's your headphone. Just sit down. Okay, one. perfect. You Let's know who I have? A, I think I have a central region person that's going to make a difference. Okay. It's the three guys that come off the bench for the Mavericks. Because I don't know if any other team has three kids like that that can come off the bench and affect the game the way those three can. And no. I think if the Mavericks get to the game on Tuesday, those three will have a big part in it. Well, Harrison Brown has hit a a couple of three-pointers in that championship game, and I know head coach Matt Margenthaler said Harrison looked at him and said, it's about darn time. (laughs) He was so excited to hit a couple, and he mentioned the guys off the bench, Freddie Williams had a huge conference tournament as well, and Malcolm Jones again, 
he's just a tough matchup. But I think Malcolm defensive-wise, the way he plays on anyone's fourth or center, and he gets rebounds. No, I, I like that, too. The three guys off the bench are going to be very key because when Minnesota State has played really well this season, they've got really good bench production. When they haven't, the games have been a little bit closer. And, and how many teams have a Brady Williams that comes in? How many teams come in and have a, I, would, I wouldn't call him a backup center, but in Malcolm Jones, I would say he's the seven, sixth or seventh or eighth starter that could come in and change the game, not just defensively, but the way he plays on offense, too. And I just don't see many teams that have that. But... It's who gets off to a good start here. You know, five minutes, the first five minutes of this half, the first five minutes of the second half really make a difference because everybody's nervous. Minnesota State, their head coach, Matt Morgan Thaler, his 23rd season, 482 wins, 211 losses, 21 winning seasons, 14th NCAA tournament appearance in those 23 years. Most games he's won in the season, 30 points back in the 2013-14 season. Mavericks went 30 and 5. He has a chance for the win tonight to tie that mark as Minnesota State comes in again, 29-2. and two. We are ready to roll. It's the NCAA tournament. If you're watching on the stream, Aaron Worm and Rick Jettelow with you. We're on the fan Mankato, KFSP Mankato. We're ready to jump things off, and the jump is won by Arkansas Tech. They're wearing the bright yellow unis, white numerals, green trim. They're the Wonder Boys. Minnesota State in the white uniforms, purple numerals, gold trim. We're Mavericks above the top of the numerals. Man-to-man defense by Minnesota State to start. Arkansas Tech going from left to right. Egan's gets a steal. Coming around the scheme, the screen was Camerad. And Justin Egan's picks his pocket. That's one thing about Justin. We know he can shoot the three-point ball well, but he's very good defensive wise. Peters has it right wing, hands it off to Malik, back to Peters. Peters slides in over to Justin, the corner. Hayes camp wide open for three. That one is long. Rebound pulled down by Dylan Peters. Peters back in his way in over to Kai Reese. Kai Reese around the screen, top of the key. Double team comes, passing the corner to Malik. Malik had to save it from going out of bounds. Sort of a touch pass to Egan, step back for three. Justin shot is short, long rebound. And it comes out pulled down by Schaefer. So a couple of good looks there in the opening possession. And now we're going to have an offensive foul on Arkansas Tech. Foul's going to be called. That's going to be on Mitchell. He's going to pick up his first. And a really quick substitution, a minute 03 in. Mitchell will sit down. Sean Cobb, a six foot seven junior from Williamston, Michigan, a Dakota State College transfer, will check in for Arkansas Tech. Chance of defense. Again, this place is loud. Not a lot of empty seats here at Breslin Arena. Malik has it. Still with it on that left wing. Willingham looking to go. Good defense. I'll spin to the base. That little floater by Malik is going to shake off. Loose ball picked up by Peter. So both teams looking for their first point. Arkansas Tech looking for their, their second shot of the game. Chance of defense. Again, this is fun. The American machine is here. A lot of the football players in the Minnesota State team sitting behind one of the buckets, and now Egan's going to be called for reach-in foul. Brooks is driving to the bucket, and Egan's bumped him. That'll be his first team foul number one. And really good action for nobody scored, but for two minutes of action, both up and down, both teams just uh, being aggressive, trying to get to the rim. They haven't put the ball in the basket yet. Again, if you're looking for Minnesota State women's basketball, it's a stream-only game today. Go to thefanmankato.com or go to ktoe.com. Nice pass under, underneath. Missed the layup. Got to your second chance. Sean Com off the bench. Offensive rebound. Arkansas Tech up 2 nothing. Minnesota State and women's basketball. They're up 9-2. to two. Wow. After the first minute plus. Justin Egan's for three on the other end. Shot no good. Peters battling for it. And a rebound ends up in the hands of Com. So Minnesota State off to an 0-4 start from the field to start this one. They're down 2-0. Schaefer thought about a three. Now the top player in the GAC conference. Three-pointers no good. Missed there by Peter. Rebound pulled down by Egan. Sure, a lot of nerves for both teams. Malik going right to the bucket. Little floaters no good. Rebound tapped in and good by Hayscamp. Wow. Hayscamp sliding in. And Elijah ties things up at two apiece. And a great job to just follow in. And he was above the rim on his put back. But the Mavericks needed a basket right away. Right side to Brooks. Guarded by Egan's double team comes on that switch now to the wing to Schaefer. Schaefer back to the wing, guarded by Malik Willingham. 2-2 game, 17-09 to go first half. 
Swings it right side. Head fake. Puts it up. A tough shot. Left it short. Good defense. Dallas Brooks that missed the baseline jumper. Here comes Minnesota State. Hayes camps down about a long three. Back to the top from the lake. 2-2 game. Three minutes gone by Egan's. La Pesca Kai. Reese goes up. It's blocked. Wow. Sliding in and blocking his Tyrese Willingham going up for the jam. He gets blocked in a three-point on the other end. It's no good, but a rebound pulled down by Camerad. Camerad's the one that had the block, so an offensive rebound for the Wonder Boys. Running the bucket now. Tyrese with the block blocks it on the bounce, and he actually blocked it off of Peter, and the basketball goes to Minnesota State. Wow. Not I don't know if I've, get... yeah, I don't think I've seen two blocks like that here the entire, well, it's been a long time. Both tremendous defensive plays on both ends. You kind of had the feeling after Tyrese got blocked on one yeah. end, he was looking for a block on the other end, and he blocked it off of Peter. Right to sort of say to Arkansas Tech, tied at two. Malik goes right to the bucket, little floater is in the cheer drop for Malik Willingham. Top score for Minnesota State, 19 points per game. Again, all five starters in double figures for Minnesota State. Peter thought about a long three. Peter at the free throw line, looking for some help. Back to the top of the key to Schaefer. Schaefer with 15 to shoot, drives to the bucket off the glass, going to shake in for Schaefer. And we're tied at four apiece. And the Wonder Boys, they're led by Peter, 19 points a game. Brooks, 12.9. Camerad with 12.3. And it looked down for a second. Who made, that was Dylan Egan's Peters. hit Dylan Peters and really a nice baseline drive, and Peters go to the basket. So really nicely done by the Mavericks. So Peters gets a bucket, 6-4 Minnesota State. Egan's with the assist. Right side, Peter. In the right corner, driving baseline, while running left-handed layup is no good. Left it short with Schaefer on the rebound. It goes out of bounds. Last touch by Arkansas Tech. Grabby timeout on the floor. And the head coach, uh, Mark Downey, going right to his players. Not happy. In the year is Sean Cobb. And Lisa Summit's the official as well. 15-23 to go. It's the NCAA tournament. You win, you move on, you lose. And your season comes to an end. 6-4. Minnesota State, the top seed, leads the eighth seed by two. We're back in 30 seconds on the fan, Mankato. Again, the Minnesota State women's basketball team. They're in the round of 36 today. They won their opening round game yesterday. They're playing Fort Hayes State. And just like yesterday, they were up 26 to 6 after the first quarter. They went on for a 20 point win. They're taking care of business early in Bethany, Oklahoma. They're up 13 to 2 with 6.13 to go in the first quarter. Six points for Natalie Bramer, five for Emily Herzberg. That's now 13 5. Again, if you want to listen to that game, go to KTOE.com or the FanManKeto.com. That game is available stream only because we got plenty of Maverick sports. The immense hockey team playing right now in KTOE if you're looking for hockey. 6-4 lead pass to Willingham. It's blocked by Peter underneath. Trying to reverse layup and good defense by Peter, the 6'4 junior. On the block and enter, and Kyrie gets the block and now a foul. It's Malcolm Jones. Brady Williams, Harrison brought us all in for Minnesota State. Ball's going to be on Malcolm Jones. It'll be his first. That'll be team foul number two on Minnesota State. So shooting two free throws will be Tommy Camaret. I'm not sure I've ever seen so much action in a game in five minutes and the score is six to four. <laughs> I agree with you. 81% free throw shooter hits the first one. Again, you kind of look around. You have to, to soak everything in here. At Resident Arena at Taylor Center, this is why every game in the regular season is so important. Winning your regular season conference title, winning the tournament title, to have this kind of atmosphere on your home floor. Second free throw also hit, and we're tied at six apiece. 15.03 to go here in the first half. Minnesota State, their usual rotation. The Willingham brothers out there with Jones, Williams, 
And here's Sembrana speaking of one of the Willinghams. Kyrie's able to knock down the three in the corner. And it rattled in. And Minnesota State knocking down their first three of the game, 9-6 Mavericks. Top of the key to Schaefer. This switch now back. Ross Jones had for his second. Schaefer over to Peter. Peter to Kyrie. On the ground, one knee for the for Gets it over to Malik. Malik left elbow right to the bucket. It's blocked by Peter on the way up. That's going to be a great matchup between the top players and their respective leagues going at it. There's a layup on the other end. That's Brooks off the glass and Gervin right at Brady Williams. It's a 9 8 game. Wonder Boys and Mavericks. Williams has it in the paint, driving in. Wow. Out of contact, puts it up, shot no good. Left it short from about six feet. Rebound by Arkansas Tech. Tech trying to get back on top. Peter left side, back to the top of the key to Camerad. Camerad pulls up at the free throw line, knocks it down. And it's 10-9, Wonder Boys on top by a point. 13.45 to go here in the first quarter, or first half. Yeah, everyone's good at this point. It's the NCAA tournament. Many teams at home right now wishing they were here in Mankato. Malik Willingham looking for a screen from Brontis. Malik still at the basketball. Now on the left side. Miles, a tough pass. Might have been tipped. Almost picked off on the right side by Kyrie's Willingham. Chases it down. Kyrie's right to the bucket. He goes wow. up. He's fouled. And a couple of free throws coming up for Kyrie's. Well, if you're going to take the ball to the basket today, boy, you better put your armor on to go into the lane because Kyrie's took that about as hard as you could go and I didn't think they were going to call a foul on that one but it's, the action is so heated defensively not for the faint of heart no there. it is not on either end so Kyrie's will shoot a couple of free throws first one is short Kyrie's coming in a 68% free throw shooter Minnesota State shoots 75% as a team from the charity strike Kyrie's with three points and knocks down the second one to tie things up at 10 apiece. Central region action here on the Fan Man, Kato KFSP, Aaron Worm, and Rick Gentilo with you. 10-10 game, 13-15 to go in the opening half. Pass inside, Peter with is going to put it up over Kyrie's. It spins off the rim and Brady Williams comes down with the rebound. Head coach of Arkansas Tech just slamming down his hand. Don't hurt our new scores table. Oh, the scoreboard. Score table's nice. Malcolm Jones, right elbow, driving in, puts it up off the glass, too strong. Rebound pulled down by Peter. He'll shuffle the head to Brooks. Brooks in transition off the glass, too strong. He had Kyrese and Malik flying at him, the Willingham brothers. And Minnesota State comes down with the rebound. Both guys definitely altered his shot. 10 10 game, 12 36 to go. First half, Brannis on the top of the key. Brannis by the Maverick logo, left side to Malik. Only looking for a screen from Jones. Double team comes, looking for some help. Almost lost it at the Kyrie's. Kyrie's with the right elbow. Kicks the Broadus open for three in the corner. Broadus is shot. Oh, just rattles out. Rebound pulled down by Peter. 10-10 game. Both teams a slow start offensive-wise. Minnesota State 4 of 15 from the field, 26.7%. The Wonder Boys 4 of 13 from the field, 30%. And now a turnover. Trying to cut to the bucket. One of their guards lost the handle. A turnover. We got some substitutions. Dylan Peters and Elijah Hayes Camp will check in. Both the Willingham brothers will sit down. This is the kind of game, too. You probably need a break quicker because the adrenaline that you have that goes through you, you just get out of breath really quick. And here's where I think the Maverick bench matters. Well, and here's the good thing. Minnesota State is tied with 12-1 to go in the first half. Again, they haven't played for 11 days. Yeah. That's a long stretch to be off. So you expect a little rust to be out there. As Egan's trying to shake off that rust, little 12 foot jumper in the paint. And it's 12 10, two point lead for Minnesota State. After you're used to playing every weekend for so long, 11 days, that's a long time to just practice. So Egan splits Minnesota State back on top. Top of the key, Schaefer. Schaefer for three over Hayes Cam hits it. So Schaefer knocks it down and. There's a handful of fans that have made the drive, I think, 10-plus hours to get here from Russellville, Arkansas, sitting behind that bench. Wonder Boys up by a point, 13-12. And a Wonder Boys team that comes with a pretty impressive record at 25-6. And now a turnover on Minnesota State. Pass ball back to 
Arkansas Tech. Head coach of Minnesota State, Matt Morgan, Taylor, not happy with that call. No, that, I don't. I agree with them because it was either foul or give the ball back to the Mavericks underneath out of bounds. But if you're going to take it to the basket or rebound it, she better go in there with uh, a real good purpose, or you're not going to get a call. Yeah, they're they're letting yeah they're letting teams play. It's physical here at the NCAA tournament. Again, if you missed the games from earlier today, our first game was a buzzer beater. UMD beats Fort Hayes State. Fort Hayes State was up by a point with eight seconds to go. Had a one-on-one attempt. They missed the front end. UMD able to push the pace to the other end. And a layup made by Matt Thompson as time expired. They checked the the replay to make sure. And it was off in plenty of time as UMD wins 59-58. Number two over. Identifying number three over number six. Our second game, Northwest Missouri State, who is used to hosting the Central Region. They win by 30 against Southwest Minnesota State, 73-43. In that game, they were up at halftime by 15 points, 37-22. And they had made one two-point bucket in the first half. One two-point bucket. All their points in the first half came from a three-point range of the free-throw line. They hit eight threes in the first half. They hit 11 free throws, and they were up by, again, 15 at halftime, and they're the real deal. They went by 30, 73-43 earlier today. After the timeout, 13-12 lead. The Wonder Boys, the eight seed over the one seed. Baseline jumper from eight feet, knocking it down to Schaefer. Schaefer lost a handle going up. They're the recover. It's 15-12, three-point lead. Ronis will bring it across the timeline. Right side to shot. Shot looking for some help. Or not shot. Take it back. Dylan Peters. I was thinking of Mike Shot, associate head coach, will join us at halftime. Little floater put up. Just rolls off the rim. Right side for Minnesota State. Long pass at the Peter in transition. Right to the bucket. A one-hand jam. And the Wonder Boys, Arkansas Tech, are up by five, 17 12. It's a 7 0 run by Tech. It was 12 10, Minnesota State. MSU needs a bucket inside. Brady Williams goes for a one hand jam. It's no good, but he's fouled in a couple of free throws. Coming up for Williams. It's really what the Mavericks have done best is to get the ball down in a short corner and then dive somebody from the backside, which they certainly did. Brady Williams is this. I just think he's such a hard guard. So Brady Williams will shoot a couple. First free throw is no good. And again, we've seen this from Minnesota State at times, especially in the first half. And again, there's a lot of nerves. They know the pressure's on them, especially in this first game. And you're right, though, Aaron. I mean, to not play for, you know, 11 days is a huge deal. Yeah, Brady had 11 points in that championship win against UMD. Second free throw for Brady is good. One and two. But we've seen it many times that once Minnesota State gets in the flow of the game, it's a much different team. And right now they're down by four. They snap a 7-0 run. Right now it's a 7-1 run by Arkansas Tech. 17-13 Wonder Boys, 10 minutes to go. First half. Top of the key, Schaefer. Schaefer guarded by Broadus. Hands it off on the right side to Camerad. Camerad almost traveled there at the free throw line. Back to Schaefer, eight to shoot. Schaefer still with it around the screen left side. Kicks in the corner on the wing. Pull up 18-foot jumper. That shot is no good. Missed by Camerad. Rebound pulled down by Peters. 17-13. Willingham, that's Kyrie Smith, four. Only Maverick with more than one bucket, and a push foul is going to be called. On Arkansas Tech, that's going to be on Mitchell. And for Mitchell, he's going to pick up. That's his second, and that's a big call. Uh, Josh Mitchell, the defensive player of the year, the Great American Conference, six foot eight junior from Tupelo, Mississippi, will have to sit down. They're picking up his second, team foul number four at Arkansas Tech. Mavericks down by four, nine and a half minutes to go in the first half. Blake Willingham pass side to Peters, too far underneath the bucket. It went through Dylan's hands, a turnover. And Schaefer with it the other way. 17 13, Wonder Boys up by four. Right side, Brooks, guarded by Malik. Brooks looking for some help to the top to Cobb. And back to Schaefer running the offense. 15 to shoot. Schaefer looking for a screen at the top of the key. Hands it off to Peter. Peter 
Back to Schaefer, they to shoot. Schaefer guarded by Egan's, goes right to the bucket. Underhand layup, too strong off the glass. Rebound pulled down by Peters. And the Curry's Willingham to Hayes camp. Too far underneath the bucket. Back to Malik for three in transition. Malik shots off to the right. Peters a tap out to Egan's. Offensive rebound for Minnesota State. Left side to Hayes camp. Hayes camp drives in the paint. Head fake puts it up. Contact, no foul. He missed it. Peters gets the rebound. Peters had it knocked away. Oh, it out to Schaefer. They are letting them play here in the first half. 17 13, four point lead for the Wonder Boys. Eight and a half minutes to go in this first half. Hands it off right seat. Cameron for three. His three is no good, but an offensive rebound. Peters bailing for it. And right away, Sean Cobb had the offensive rebound, and Peters knocked it away. Speaking of Peters in transition, his layup is good. He's wow. like an antelope as he flies down the court. That was a tough layup. The pass is right next to the bucket. He had to go up so quick with it. It's a two-point game, 17-15 Wonder Boys. Tom Brady all of a sudden became the point guard for the Mavericks. It looks Unreal. Like. Peter has it left wing. Double team comes on Peter. Peter pass goes off the foot of Malik Willingham. It'll be a pick. They're going to have a time on the floor. It's the NCAA tournament. Central region opening round action. One versus eight. And right now the eight seed, Arkansas Tech. They're up by two over Minnesota State, 17-15. We'll take a 30-second timeout. Maverick basketball on the fan, Mankato. Aaron Worm and Rick Genelow with you here on the Fan Mankato. Down in Bethany, Oklahoma, second round of the NCAA tournament in women's basketball. Again, if you're looking for that game, the FanMankato.com and KTOE.com. It's a stream-only game today for the Fan.com or KTOE.com to listen to that game with Dan Brookins. Minnesota State was up by 11 early at 13-2. They played one quarter there. Minnesota State 24, Fort Hay State 19. Five-point lead for Minnesota State after the first quarter. 43 points scored in that game in 10 minutes. A lot of offense going on there. 32 points scored here in 12 minutes in our game. 17-15, Wonder Boys with the lead and the basketball. And both teams, I think, uh, Kyrie's Willingham's getting something put on his jersey, I think. But both teams defensively have been just terrific and have guarded the paint really well defended challenged the shots rebounded it and got out and ran just neither team has shot the ball well i mean the mavericks one for six and three and they just the reason they're one for six is because they haven't got an open look yet um and they'll get that i think as they get some more rhythm to their offense but we got 751 to go aaron it's going to be big who can play the best seven minutes and 51 seconds to end the half 17 15 two-point lead for arkansas tech Schaefer's got seven. Camarant's got four to lead the way. Right side to Cobb. Cobb hands it off to Camarant. That's a tough three. Moving to his right. He missed it. Rebound pulled down by Kyrie's Willingham. The Willingham brothers out there with Egan's, Hayes Camp, and Malcolm Jones. Malik, little floater off the glass and good. Wow. That should get Malik going. He's got four points. We're tied at 17. Kind of his signature shot, that little floater on the baseline. Got it to go. We're tied. I think everybody that's driven to the basket has gotten knocked down today, but there hasn't been many fouls called. It was a 7 0 run by the Wonder Boys. Mavericks with a 5 0 run. And now Brooks with a layup to break that tie, 19 17. Again, Arkansas Tech 25 and 6. Minnesota State 29 and 2. The Great American Conference, again, only getting one team in this NCAA tournament. Egan's has it left side. Egan's looking to drive. Step back three for Justin. Whoppers knocks it down. It's 20 to 19. One point lead for Minnesota State. Justin Egan's. He's got five points. His first three. In that right corner now to the wing. That is Braden Tanner, six foot one freshman from Darden Nell, 
Arkansas. Now back to the top to Brooks. Brooks going to pull with the free throw line of Raheem's camp. His shot is short. Peter trying to tap it in. Goes out of bounds. Last touch by Minnesota State. So Schaefer, who took a quick breather, he'll come back in. Dylan Peters will come in as well. Dylan with four points and four rebounds already. Malik Willingham is trying to explain to the official what happened. That might be the first time Malik had to look up to an official. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Malik Willingham. Player of the Year in the Northern Sun Conference. MVP of the conference tournament. Player of the Year here in the Central Region. A shot off the glass and good in the paint. Taking his time over Dylan Peters with Sean Combe. Wonder Boys back up by a point, 21-20. It's been a battle here early. 6.05 to go first half. Willingham across the timeline. Looking for a screen from Peters' right side. Malik has on that right wing. Malik driving in trust of the Peters for a two-hand dunk. Little give and go back and forth between those two. And Dylan Peters, the recipient of a beautiful pass from Malik. He's got six. Mavericks back up by a point, 22-21. Schaefer top of the key, right side to Camerad. Back to Schaefer. Schaefer looking to go on Malik. Now has it right side. 534 to go first half to Peter. Peter guarded by Kyrie. Wow. Almost lost it. Five to shoot. Peter the Schaefer in between the circles. Schaefer unloads for three. He hits it. That was great defense by the Willingham brothers, but Schaefer knocks down the three. His second of the game. Wonder Boys up by two, 24-22. Yeah, not much you can do about that no. one, Rick. No, it was uh, three, four feet outside the three-point line. Now Malik's going to be bumped. In front of the scorer's table, Chad Courier at the Mankato Free Press put his hand out to make sure that Malik didn't fall into him. That would be the first assist that Chad Courier ever had, but that's okay. <laughs> Cobb's going to pick up the foul. That's the fifth on the Wonder Boys, the second on Minnesota State. They want to look at the last three-pointer. Okay. They want to look at the last three. That was hit down here. Or no, last three, I think, on the other end yeah. by Schaefer. And they have an official that's sitting at the scorer's table. And his job is to look over things like that so they don't have to worry about looking at it later. And the official at the table said that was a three-pointer. Someone get knocked over the well, other side? The end of the scorer's table did. And Keswick <laughs> Joyner, the official, was trying to fix it. I'll say he was sitting next to us. He was the official of the scorer's table for the last game. He's a great guy. 24-22. Peters with it. Peters gets pumped. He's falling down in the paint. No fouls called. It goes out of bounds. Last touch by the Wonder Boys. Minnesota State wants a foul. Wonder Boys want to travel. Elijah Hayes can't give him the symbol for, hey, everybody just relax. Everybody calm down. Getting a lot of, lot of energy. A lot of nervous yes. energy. Yes, for sure. Can he play 31 games to get into a tournament or it's one and done? Malik in the Peters right elbow. Peters looking for some help over to Egan's on that right wing. Justin with the basketball. Justin looking to go. Going to pull up 12 foot jumper. Shot his long rebound. Pulled down by Cobb. 24 22, the eighth seed, Arkansas Tech. On the home floor, the host, top seed in second rank, Minnesota State. Wonder Boys are up by two, 24 22. Schaefer, right side to Brooks. Brooks around the screen. Brooks in the left elbow. Brooks still with a win nine to shoot. Brooks back in his way in the Hayes camp. Still bumping. Double team comes. His pass is off the hands of Kai Reese out of bounds. And Arkansas Tech will inbounds with five seconds in the shot clock. It's really good defense by the Mavericks. They switched really well. They talked pretty well. And now they got to defend for five more seconds. Peter will inbounds. Pass inside over the head of Egan's. And Egan's will be called for the foul. There was a height disadvantage. Sean Cobb at six foot seven, and Justin Egan's at six foot three, and Egan's going to call for the hold. And that was probably he, he had a foul. Him, otherwise, I think an easy bucket was coming. I, think, I don't think Coach Morgenthaler quite agrees with that call. And there's been a lot of other things that have gone on, but that's okay. Well, Egan's will pick up his second. Yeah. He'll should sit down. Harrison Bronis will check in. That's team foul number three on Minnesota State. A three in the corner is good. Knocking it down off the inbounds is Brooks. It's 27-22. Wonder Boys up by five. Their biggest lead of the game. 
Now Peters sliding in. He got it stolen away by Schaefer. Loose ball picked up by Kyrie. Or to Hayskamp for three. His three is good. Minnesota State needed that. Elijah Hayskamp off a mad scramble for the loose basketball. Kyrie picks it up. Shuffles it to him. Big three. Big answer. Lead down the two. You could say this whole first half has kind of been a mad scramble, Aaron. I think it seems like there hasn't been a lot of flow. It's just been some tough guy plays. Schaefer top of the key, guarded by Broadus. Broadus, Hayes, Cam, Peters. Willingham and Willingham out there for Minnesota State. Brooks has it right side going in. Reverse layup is good. So Brooks knocks down a three. Reverse layup. He's got nine points. Timeout by Arkansas Tech. The lead is four, 29-25. And again, this Arkansas Tech team, they have nothing to lose. I'm sure they jumped on a plane, got up here a couple of days ago. Mentioned a 10 and a half hour drive if you're taking car or probably bus or, or train yeah. to get here to Mankato. I'm sure they enjoyed coming north in the spring. I'm sure it's not very nice in Arkansas and Russellville, Arkansas right now. But so far, they've been really good. I mean, defensively, how are they in AC? They're defensively been really good. They challenged all the stuff the Mavericks have tried to do and have just competed really hard for the first you know, 17 minutes. Again, they've lost, or not lost, I should say, they've won 10 games in a row coming in. Minnesota State also winners at 10 in a row. So both have 10-game winning streaks. And I'm looking when it comes to common opponents uh, both teams took on arkansas monticello minnesota state met them 69 57 win that was in kansas city back in november 12 point win against arkansas monticello and they beat that same team twice 87 81 and they also beat them 67 50. and they lost their their first two games of the season arkansas tech did taking on teams from the MIAA, they lost to Emporia State, 86-76. They got beat by Fort Hayes State, which was in the NCAA tournament. They got beat earlier by UMD. They lost to Fort Hayes State, 66-52. But again, those are early games. Arkansas Tech started the season 0-2. They've been 25-4 ever since. They see how. right now up by four. I like that. I mean, they've got a really good group. Kyrie's the free throw line, looking for some help. Right side to Broadus. Broadus on that wing, back to Kai Reese. Right baseline, Kai Reese back in his way in, still back in his way in. Little runner block comes over. Sliding over for the double team is Sean Cobb, and Cobb with the block. It remains a four-point game, 3-12 to go here in the first half of the NCAA tournament. Central region opening round, Mavericks down by four in a fight against the eighth seed early. Brooks driving in, drops off underneath, and Malik knocked it away. Loose ball, scramble on the baseline, and Malik took it away. He knocked it away from Cobb, and then both guys fighting for the basketball. Malik comes up with it. Now Peter's sliding in, and a foul is going to be called, and Dylan's going to shoot a couple. Harrison Broaddus got it to Dylan Peters, and Peters will go to the free throw line. That's been the best offense the Mavericks have had today. Get out and run and in transition when Arkansas Tech isn't quite back, because defensively when the Mavericks have tried to run something, Arkansas Tech has... You know, they've doubled the ball screen, which have made it really difficult. They challenge passes. They challenge your dribble. Dylan Peters, 10 and a half points per game. All-conference second team in the Northern Sun. is a 72% free throw shooter. And Peters with seven points to lead the way for Minnesota State. Four rebounds. And we've seen this in games before where, where the offense has struggled. Dylan Peters has kind of picked up the slack in the first half before other guys join him. He hits the second one as well. It's a two-point game, 29-27. 2.50 to go. Aaron Worman, Rick Gittolo with you on KFSP, the fan man, Cato. 12.30 a.m., FM 103-1. And that pass underneath a turnover. Schaefer on a back door trying to get it to Camerad. Schaefer given the symbol. He thought there was a push on Minnesota State. No whistle. And turnover on the Wonder Boys. Gets their six turnovers. So they have had, they have turned it a few times. But the Mavericks need to end the half here well. 2.34 to go. Yeah, Minnesota State's last lead was at 9-6. to six. It's been a while. Broadus has it right side. Broadus, a screener on Peter's top of the key. Left side to Malik. Malik driving in. Malik's going to pull up a little 10-foot floater. Is strong. Rebound. Ends up to Hayes Camp. Hayes Camp kicks it out. Tyrese for three. Rattles in. 
Offensive rebound turns into a three ball for Tyrese Willingham. His second three, he's got seven points. And Minnesota State back on top by a point, 30 to 29. That was Elijah Hayes camp giving that one alive. Trying to answer a three on the other end. That shot is no good by Brooks. Rebound pulled down by Peters. Mavericks up by one. Peters going right to the bucket. His layup no good. He's fouled and a couple of free throws coming up for Dylan Peters. And that's the luxury of having a guy like Dylan Peters because he can run the floor so well and he plays the five out there for them. I think he might, he's the best running big guy I think the Mavericks have had. I can't remember the last guy they had. Certainly not that they could run like he can. So Peters will shoot two. He's got eight points. Peters will hit the first free throw. Fouls called on camera. And it'll be his first. Team foul number seven on the Wonder Boys. And again, the top players in their respective league. Peter has two points. Malik Willingham's got four. Oh. So the two stars held in check so far in this one. Second free throw by Peters is also good. 32-29. Peter is one of four from the field. Malik is two of eight. 32-29. Mavericks up by three after two free throws by Peters. Dylan's got 10 points. Brooks. Now pass inside. A nice cut. Baseline. Easy layup. Camerad able to finish. The pass came from Cobb in the corner. That's 32-31. Maverick lead down to one. 85 seconds to go in this first half. Central region opening round. From Breslin Arena at Taylor Center here in Mankato. Hayes camp, left side, Prada open for three in the corner. Harrison's shot is no good. Rebound tapped around. Ends up in the hands of Brooks. Now the Peter going right to the bucket. Good defense by Hayes camp, but he still rolls it in. And Peter's got four points. Wonder Boys, they're up by a point, 33 32. Malika double team. They're doubling every time Malika has the basketball. Broadus left side. Broadus slides in to Peters. Peters goes up out of contact and still finish. No whistle. But Peters, he's got a dozen here in the first half. And Minnesota staying up by a point, 34-33. 41 seconds to go. Differential about 18 seconds. Shot clock and game clock. Peter going baseline. Kyrie comes over. Kyrie blocks the shot. Peter put it up. And here comes Minnesota State. A four on two. Malik right to the bucket. Layup no good. Rebound. A scramble for it. And Cobb comes up with it. And then he, I think that Brooks comes up with it. It should have been a double dribble instead of an easy layup. By Schaefer. Brooks double dribble. There was no whistle. Schaefer got the bucket. It's a one point lead for the Wonder Boys with seven seconds to go here in the first half. Peters driving in right to the bucket. Wow. His layup is good. Peters has 14. Mavericks up by one as his first half comes to an end. And then coach Matt Morgan Taylor going right to the official. The associate head coach Mike Schott will join us. We get ourselves a good one. Minnesota State up by a point, 36-35. Associate head coach Mike Schott joins us here at halftime. And did you expect maybe, I don't want to say rustiness, but again, the team hasn't played for 11 days. That might have showed in the first 10 minutes. Yeah, we, yeah, we didn't finish some shots there. Uh, first half around the basket. And so some, we got we got pretty darn good looks for the, for the most part that we didn't finish. So uh, can't really do much about that. I mean, Correct, when you're getting yeah. good looks, you, you don't want to beat yourself up about it. You just got to continue to grind uh, and, and, and guard them at the other end, which we got to do a little better job in the second half. Obviously, in the first half, matchup rounds for them against Dylan Peters, 14 points. I mean, he's he's going to control in the paint. Yeah, he, he's doing a great job in transition and run and, and attack. He's, he's a tough matchup. I mean, the, the pace of the game is where we want it to be, honestly, which is a surprise. We thought they would really try to slow it down. They hurt us early on with, with some transition stuff. So, uh, But they're, they're, they're awfully good there off, offensively. They run some good stuff. We just got to guard the ball a lot better in the second half. I'll say, Mike, we talked about this before where the team has had the, the looks in the first half and haven't hit a lot of times things get better in the second half we're hoping for that again you speak that into existence for us Aaron that'd be that'd be great to start seeing those go in the second half Mike Schott associate head coach joining us here at halftime thank you very much Mike 36 35 Mavericks up by a point here at halftime and I think we have uh, indoor track and field members out here at half court yeah a couple of national champions Yeah, you can see this on your screen right now. Yeah, the indoor track and field yeah. team is so good. Year after year. Wow. 
Yeah, I get, I'll, I'll grab the stories. I, I do have the stories on both athletes, but again, two national champions for Minnesota State in indoor track and field. They're being honored here at halftime. 36-35, Mavericks are up by a point. We're going to take a minute timeout. Earlier today on KTOE on the Bench Warmer Show, John Harrington sat down with the head coach of Minnesota State football, Todd Hoffner. They got some things coming up in April. We're talking spring football. We'll replay that conversation for you coming up in just a moment. Again, our halftime score in the central region of the NCAA tournament. Opening round, the top seed Minnesota State leads the number eight seed Arkansas Tech by a point, 36-35. We're back in a minute on the fan main cable. And then, and then some bumper music. Okay, thank you. Halftime here at Breslin Arena at Taylor Center. 36-35, Mavericks up by a point. Do you want to mention a Minnesota State women's basketball? Stream only the fan, Mankito.com or KTOE.com if you're looking for that stream. Minnesota State, that's the second round of the NCAA tournament. With a win today, they play in the Central Region Championship coming up on Monday. Mavericks up by 12. We have 44 seconds to go until halftime. So some good news to report from Bethany, Oklahoma. Minnesota State 41, Fort Hayes State 29. Two players in double figures in that game. Destiny Bursch with 10. Emily Herzberg with 10. Nellie Bramer's got 8. So the Maverick women up by 12 just before halftime. For earlier today on the Bench Warmers show on KTOE, John Harrington got a chance to sit down with the head coach of Minnesota State football, Todd Hoffner, because we got spring football right around the corner. So we'll play back that interview for you here at halftime on the Fan Man Cato. Hey, how you doing, John? Wow. What a what a day to be a Maverick, huh? Yeah, absolutely. A lot of great things going on. I don't know if you heard me talk to Scott Nelson, but I, I gave your marketing group a new motto. All we do, MSU, all we do is win, and we like it. Yeah, win, 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 no matter what. <laughs> Well, it starts off in the fall, and your football game, your football team sets a precedence, and I know the other coaches like that. Obviously, it draws attention to the university. Well, there's a lot of attention, like you said, going on right now with the regional basketball tournament at the Taylor Center. Yeah, no doubt about it. So there was quite a drought there in the fall. We didn't have any Mavs uh, winning any championships. We got close. Soccer got close. You know, there was a lot of close call type of things but uh women's basketball got things going with the championship and then the men's and hockey got an opportunity to continue on a journey and win a cup and a championship for their conference and basketball today for men's um wow what an opportunity to host again i think it's been about 10 years and i'm so happy for coach Morgan taylor uh, and his squad, boy, they got a nice, nice group of young men there, and they're really playing well together. And had a nice transfer infusion that I think really sparked things to be pretty elite. And the women winning yesterday in their regional tournament. So you're right; it's uh, it's uh, going to be a huge day for all those winter sport teams that are competing. And I saw that uh, we had a swimming and diving uh, all American as well. So you know, lots of lots of great things going on, and you know we're excited and going to be there cheering on the uh, cheering on the herd. Well, you downplayed football a little bit, Coach. Uh, you you didn't win the championship in the Northern Sun, but you were also a competitor in the NCAA playoffs. So again, great success with that football program, and uh, 
it starts in the spring and that's what's going on now you have spring ball and and some events coming up this spring yeah thanks john you know we try our hardest to do our best and we were so close to winning a championship and kind of failed to deliver in our last home game but there's always next year right and that's what we're looking forward to and Spring football is a tremendous opportunity for our youth to develop and prove and advance their prospectus for the future. And so we're going through a major transformation with our program and we're trying to get a lot better. Uh, we need to do a lot better and what a great opportunity for us. So this coming Tuesday, we're going to get in helmet and shockers for a couple of days and then we're going to put on the full pads a week from today. And next thing you know, it four weeks from today, we're going to have our pigskin barbecue, which is our eighth annual. Uh, it's a very festive atmosphere and event. We have smokers that cook the meat for the VIP people. So a VIP ticket, you can buy these online. Just go to msumavericks.com and then do a search for pigskin. But a VIP participant uh, is good for two. Right, you get some VIP parking. Uh, you get to eat the meat that the smokers cook, and you know the lakes does a tremendous job providing the sides and the additional meat. Uh, but it's a great opportunity. It follows our spring game. It's our purple and gold game uh, that we play, which will be four weeks from today. And so we'll compete against ourselves. It's a huge recruiting day as well. It's a, it's a Mav day, and last year I think we had 400 prospects came to our purple and gold game and then five weeks from today john we're going to play in the first ever spring football game for maverick football and we're going to play an actual football game uh in sioux falls south dakota at harrisburg high school and we're going to compete against northern state uh we're going to try and get better and what a golden opportunity uh you know the admin the brass and everybody that put this together really did a nice job of trying to help uh, the youth and the people develop that maybe didn't get a lot of opportunities in the fall to try and showcase their talents. Well, you say Harrisburg High School, we both have a connection there. Obviously, uh, Judy and I's daughter, Jen, is a teacher in their elementary program. And you had a recruit that uh, just had a, a fatal car accident and actually never made it to be a Maverick football player. But he, he really... I mean, you honored his parents and him at a football game, uh, a quality young man. And it was just a tragic thing that happened. It's great the Mavs are going to go play a game there. Yeah, you know, it's a somber type of deal where you go back to a young man's high school. And, you know, less than two years ago, you know, he was, you know, all excited about coming off of signing day and getting ready for, you know, fall practices. And about a week or so ahead of time, uh, unfortunately, he passed away. And, um, you know, we've been trying to honor Moose ever since and it's a tough situation. And as a parent, we know about loss. My wife and I and our family, we understand the pain and the sorrow and the grieving that goes with, uh, you know, losing a, a child, teenager. So uh, we do the best we can and, you know, life still goes on and we have to pick up the pieces and make the best of what we have where we are. So we're we're trying to march on. Well, Coach, and I also know you said you want to get better. The Mavericks, that's what you use spring for is to get better and obviously recruiting. But you have some key pieces back. You lost a lot, but you have a lot of key pieces back. I know at quarterback, Hayden Eckern is there. Defensive end, Maven Kretschy. Running back, Sheen Butler Lawson. I mean, those are some key players that to build around. Yeah, no doubt. Marshall Ferner and Tony Anger and Gabe Hagan. And, you know, the list is pretty long. We're we're pretty uh, seasoned on the offensive side of the ball and defensively. We might have to, you know, do some name tags in the fall. We're going to acquire some new guys here uh, this uh, spring and through the transfer portal and some of that kind of stuff. So, yeah, I, I like the nucleus. Uh, I like where we're at. But, man, we got to get a lot better. You know, Augustana definitely, uh, you know, took it to us. And, um Duluth's had their way with us too. So, you know, we got to bounce back. You know, we did beat a uh, quarter finalist in Bemidji State earlier in the year, and then we just didn't keep getting better. And that's not normal for teams that I've uh, led before. And, you know, it's a, it's a tough deal because you, you're good enough to be elite and you go 7-0 and you beat a 
you know, regional team, um, but you're just can't find a, a way to get over the hump and get better because we had a lot of potential and, you know, that's a, another word for lack of production. So we got a lot, lot to do and we got a lot of time to get there. So we're excited for that. And we're going to have to be ready because uh, the bear cat, that's a different animal that we're going to play in the first game in the fall uh, in early August or late August, excuse me, we're going to commence early August and we're going to compete late August. And that'll be one heck of a game down at Northwest Missouri State. Well, Coach, uh, the, what I like most about football at uh, MSU is you almost feel like it was a bad year and you're in an NCAA tournament. That's how good this program is, uh, that you're disappointed when you're not even better than what you've done. And that's what's fun about following Maverick football. Yeah, I appreciate that, John. And I want to get a shout out. Uh, recently, we lost uh, Coach Houston Jones. He's going to go and get into the private sector. And we appreciate all of his work over the last three years. And Austin Schmidt and Justin Schmitting moved on uh, in their lives as well. So we'll have a few new faces on offense and on our staff. And, you know, we'll look forward to acquiring another full-time coach here. Uh, and probably, you know, see somebody like me giving up that uh, OC title so I can potentially be a better head coach. So a lot of changes going on, but, you know, we'll get better as, as time progresses. And you said the game uh, in Sioux Falls at uh, Harrisburg High School. Is, give us the date and time of that. And if it's a real game, that means you don't need Dennis Hood and I to referee. <laughs> <laughs> You guys always did a stellar job, right? We used to call you guys the scabs, but, you know, you're a little bit better than that. I thought you guys did better than scabs did back in the day. But uh, it is on April 20th, which is five weeks from today, Harrisburg High School, 2 o'clock, 2 p.m. kickoff. And, you know, we'll be competing uh, and then heading back the same day. So it should be a fun time. Uh, appreciate your support, John. And, Appreciate all the opportunities that we get in the midst of a lot of great things going on for our winter sports. So it's a great day to be a Maverick. Roll her. And earlier today on KTOE on the Bench Warmers show, head coach of Minnesota State football, at John Hoffner. Yep, football, spring football right around the corner with our own John Harrington. We're at halftime, 36-35, Minnesota State on top by a point against Arkansas Tech. And Rick, uh, your thoughts on that first half? I really like the way Arkansas Tech played. I thought they uh, get out and competed really hard. They defend really well. For the Mavericks, they have been a slow starting team, I think. And to get some rhythm after 11 days off, I think they'll play better in the second half. And I think the, the depth that they have is going to show in the second half. But I do think Arkansas Tech's going to give them all they have because it seems like their coach, their coach is certainly a fiery guy. And the Mavericks have to find a way to get, to, you know, I, I'm going to guess they're going to adjust the ball screen coverage that Arkansas Tech gave them where they doubled Malik all the time. The Mavericks will do something a little bit different because they need to get Malik off and going. He's only he's only attempted one three-pointer, so they got to find a way to get him open. Update when it comes to hockey, that's on KTOE. They're in the third period, 3-2 Minnesota State against Michigan Tech, 13.50 to go in that one. Then the winner moves on to the CCHA Finals coming up next week, and there's an NCAA tournament berth on the line. Only one team is going to make it out of the conference. Whoever wins this conference tournament, I get in Houghton, Michigan. Mavericks up three to two over Michigan Tech. In Bethany, Oklahoma, they're at halftime, second round of the NCAA tournament, Central Region semifinals. Minnesota State leads Fort Hayes State 41-31. That's at halftime. Wow. So Minnesota State, 20 minutes away from advancing to the Central Region Final in Bethany, Oklahoma. We're underway here, second half. Aaron Worm and Rick Jettelow with you. 36-35, a three-pointer right off the bat. Malik Willingham knocks it down. And I got a feeling that play was drawn up for the, the most valuable player in the Northern Sun. He knocks it down, 39-35. Mavericks up by four. Pass inside. Underneath the bucket, double team comes. Out to Peter. Peter was bumped. No whistle. Pass underneath. A block by Peters. Going up strong for it. That was Mitchell and Peters with the block. Egan's right side to Hayes camp. Back to Malik. Malik on that right wing. 39-35. Dylan Peters, 14 points. Kyrese with seven. Malik with seven to lead the way for Minnesota State. Kyrese on the wing. And a pass trying to get back to his brother Malik. Almost turned it over. But Malik chases it down. Brings it back out to the wing. 39-35, Mavericks by four. 
Malik with four in the shot clock. A long three-pointer. Top of the key is no good. Rebound pulled down by Schaefer. We see Minnesota State when they need someone that they get going offensive-wise. They draw that first play of the second half up for them. And it worked that time of Malik knocking down a, a three-pointer. Now a turnover and a foul is going to be called at Arkansas Tech. Josh Mitchell trips up Peters after the turnover. I think that's his third foul. So Josh Mitchell has probably only played about three minutes of the 22 that the game has been played. You know, it's here for Mitchell. Yeah, just four minutes. Yeah. And again, he's the defensive player of the year in the Great American Conference. 39-35, four-point lead for Minnesota State. Leading the way for Arkansas Tech. Schaefer with 12. Cameron with six. Brooks with nine. Egan's for three, top of the key. Count it. For Jay Money, knocks it down. So back-to-back threes to start the second half. And Minnesota State's up by seven. 42-35, and that brings the crowd here. Breslin Arena to their feet. Schaefer going baseline. Over right wing to Brooks. Brooks on the top of the key. Guarded by Malik Willingham. Brooks left side. Hands it off to Peters. Back to the top to Schaefer. Schaefer guarded by Egan. Schaefer still with it. Schaefer the free throw line. Kicks in the corner. Over to Brooks. Brooks going to drive in right at Peters and over. Peters and good. Good patience by Arkansas Tech. 42-37. Maverick lead down to five after the Mavericks scored the first. Six points for the second half. Malik with a three. Justin with a three. Egan's left side to Hayskamp for a three. That one is good. Three three-pointers to start the second half for Minnesota State. And Elijah Hayskamp able to cash in on that one. The lead is eight, 45-37. And Peter drives in. He's fouled. And a couple of free throws coming up for the player of the year, the Great American Conference. It's always a shooter's game there, Rick. And Minnesota State now 7 of 14 from three-point range, shooting 50%. Shooting 44% from the field. And not just one guy. Malik with one. Egan's with one. Hayskamp with one. Peter's first free throw is good. And the Mavericks really didn't have an open three other than, I think, one in the corner in the first half. So a really good job of getting rid of the ball screens that they did uh, in the first half and really reversing the ball and getting the ball swung. Second one by Peter he is no good. That one kind of swims out. Stays a seven-point game, 45-38. to 38. So Minnesota State, a 9-2 run to start the second half. And three three-pointers going down after hitting just four the entire first half. Malik left side to Hayes, gave him the corner to Justin for three. Justin shot as well long, but Elijah's going to chase it down the corner. And we have a foul, or, oh, he must have dribbled it out of bounds. Kind of lost vision in the right corner. Next to the Maverick bench. So good hustle by Elijah. 45-38 to your Maverick fan. This is the kind of second half yeah. start you wanted. 17 minutes to go. Central region opening round. Peter in the paint. Kicks it right side. Whoa. Back to the top of the key to Schaefer. Schaefer trying to go on Egan. Schaefer in the paint. Pulls up from 12 feet. His shot is short. Rebound pulled down by Hayes Camp. I heard you whoa. Well, yeah. <laughs> Malik for a three-pointer top of the key. That shot is short. Rebound pulled down. That was a whoa, too, I think. That was a great time. Would have been a good wall if it would have went in. Now, Schaefer for three. Speaking of good shots, Schaefer knocks down a three. His third three of the game, 45-41, just like that. It's a four-point game after a 9-2 run to start the second half on Minnesota State. Mavericks with three three-pointers. The first uh, handful of minutes here in the second half. Peters, top of the key, right side to Egan. Egan's on the wing, got it stolen, taken away by Brooks. Here comes Arkansas Tech, three on two, and trying to swing it in the corner. Kyrie's Willingham flying through the air. Knocked it out of bounds. We'll keep it right here with Arkansas Tech. Peter would have been wide open in the corner for a three, but Kyrie's good hustle back on defense. Yeah, Minnesota Duluth and Northwest Missouri State, both teams already won. In first-round action, those two teams will play tomorrow at 5. Winner of this game will take on either MSU Moorhead or Pittsburgh State at 7.30. Pass inside the block to Cobb. Cobb hands it off, and a two-hand jam is Camerad going through the paint. And a nice answer. It's a 6-0 run by the Wonder Boys. The lead is down to 2 after Minnesota State led by 8. 45-43, 15.35 to go. 
Egan's going baseline and went off of somebody trying to drop it off to Peters. Front of a timeout on the floor. It's the NCAA tournament. It's a good one. The eighth seed, Arkansas Tech, trails the top seed in second rank Minnesota State by two. Mavericks 45, Wonder Boys 43, 15 32 to go in this one. We're back in 30 seconds on the fan, Mankato. Aaron Warm and Rick Gentilo with you here on the Fan Man Cato. Men's Hockey CCHA semifinals. Minnesota State leads Michigan Tech 3 2 with nine minutes to go in that one. Mavericks trying to move on to the finals of the CCHA coming up next weekend. They're still at halftime. They have not started the third quarter. According to live scoring, 41 31. Minnesota State women's basketball team, second round of the NCAA tournament. They lead Fort Hayes State by 10, 41-31. If you're looking for that game, you can find it online, thefanmankato.com or ktoe.com. There's a live stream right there online. Again, ktoe.com and thefanmankato.com if you're looking for the women's game. But again, they're up by 10. I'm not sure if... The stats have been updated for them. We'll keep trying there. Here it's a two-point game. Minnesota State up by two. Make it five as Kyrie Willingham off the timeout. Knocks down the three and a big smile on his face, Rick. Coming down the other end. Not many teams better out of timeouts than the Mavericks are. And now Malik with a steal at half court. It's a two-on-two. Two. Malik to Peters. Peters sliding in. Ran into Peter. It's going to be an offensive foul. So Peters ran into Peter. Offensive foul is going to be called on Dylan. That's going to be his second. Take that back his first. Take that back. Yeah, not a lot of fouls called in this one. Mitchell's got three for Arkansas Tech. Nobody else has more than one. And for Minnesota State, Egan's has two. Three guys have just one. Team foul number two on the Mavericks, one in Arkansas Tech. Oh. And Peter took Egan's on the screen. There's no whistle. Peter in the corner. Baseline, cross-court pass, right side, faking the shot. Brooks will pull up, and Brooks hits the three, falling backwards, and it's 48-46. Yeah, Egan's got taken out there. Sure Head did. coach Matt Morgenthaler wanted a, a whistle, no whistle, and Brooks able to cash in for a three-pointer. He's got 14 points to lead the way for the Wonder Boys. A three by Egan, trying to answer, and he does. Justin Egan's in the corner, knocks it down. That is the fifth three-pointer hit by Minnesota State here in the second half. Leads back to five, 51-46. Both teams' offenses are cooking here in the second half. Pass inside, gets around Peters and spins in for an easy two. A nice job by Sean Cobb. Got good position, left block. Gets around Peters and Cobb able to finish. He's got six points. Cameron with the assist is second. 51-48, three-point lead for Minnesota State. Egan's top of the key, left side to Hayes Camp. Back to Justin in between the circles. Justin looking for a screen. Back to Kai Reese in the corner to Malik. Malik is open for three in the corner. Malik knocks it down. It's raining threes here at Breslin Arena. The 6 3 hit here in the second half. They got it because they've just moved the ball so well in the last few possessions. They've gotten wide open shots. Minnesota State 6 and 9 from three point range in just over six minutes here in the second half. They're up by six. Now trying to answer a three on the other end. That's long by Brooks. Rebound pulled down by Peters. 54-48. Just like that, four Mavericks in double figures. Here Dylan Peters led the way with 14 in the first half. Now Kai Reese wide open for three, top of the key. He knocks it down in the timeouts called by Arkansas Tech. And Kai Reese looks right at the student body as Minnesota State hits seven three-pointers in six minutes and 44 seconds. And just like that, the Mavericks are up by nine, 57-48. Yeah, they've gotten the lead because they've just moved the ball great, and they've gotten back and defended pretty well. But when the Mavericks play like that, like they have the last three or four minutes, they can beat just about anybody. But they have, you know what, Arkansas Tech's not going to go away. I like the way they play, and 
they're a determined group, but uh, the Mavericks, you know, when they're determined, they're pretty good. Absolutely. And again, throughout the season, Minnesota State has had first halves like this. And we'll talk to Associate Head Coach and Mike Sean in the postgame show. They've had slow first halves. And, you know, they, they, they talk about in the second. They know it's the final 20 minutes. They have to really lock in for the last 20. And they've done that for the first six-plus minutes here in the second half. And, again, hot shooting helps. 11 of 20 from three-point range, 55%. Arkansas Tech, 5 of 10 from three-point range for 50%. But again, 7 of 10 from three-point range. They have not attempted a two-point field goal here in the second half. How about that? All 10 shots have come from three-point range. They're up by nine. They have. I mean, they have. Wouldn't you want them? I mean, they're such good shooters. I mean, Dylan Peters got in there and kicked it once. Hayes Camp drove in the baseline and got Justin Egan's in the other corner wide open. When they move the ball and drive and kick, it, I, what I love about the Mavericks is, you know, the, the ball screen stuff that gave me such fits in the first half they've gone away from and really have done a good job of just spacing it out and finding ways to get open shooters. And they've done a good job the first seven minutes of the half. Minnesota State women's team are up by 11, 48-37, 6.50 to go in the third quarter. In their second-round NCAA tournament game, that game of the Fan Mankato, also K2E, or on the fanmankato.com, I should say. K2E.com. That's a stream only game. Schaefer the basketball back to Peter. Peter looking for some help. Peter looking to drive. Almost traveled. Now the free throw line and a pass. They threw it away. Anybody touch it for Minnesota State? They're going to say the Mavericks touched it. It's Camerad with the pass to the free throw line. It skips out of bounds. And love to see the football team. They're filling up the first of two, three rows. <laughs> cheering on their their fellow classmates they're standing up yeah if you want to sit don't be sitting behind the hoop those guys are on their feet Shaver for three with the shot clock expiring rebound put up no good by Brunts but he was fouled and a couple of free throws coming up and just looking around and have not received an official attendance number as of yet no I haven't seen oh, it there Did we go okay 4,012 in attendance well that was an hour ago I think there's more. I think there is, too. There was some open seats, you know, at the about halftime, but, and there's still a few, but not many. So Brooks will knock down the first free throw, 57-49. Over 4,000 in attendance. For this opening round game of the NCAA tournament. Mavericks 29-2 as the second one goes down. Arkansas Tech's 25-6. Great American Conference against the Northern Sun. Northern Sun is one and one on the day. Duluth won their game. Southwest Minnesota State lost. Egan for three. Knocks it down. His defender flew by him, and Justin was wide open for a three-pointer. His fourth three of the game. He's got 14 points. Him and Peters both with 14 points. Double team comes. Almost a turnover. Brooks has it right wing. Back to the top to Schaefer. Open for three, and he answers. This Schaefer, he's a good shooter. Four is six from three-point range. He's got 18 points to lead down to seven, 60 to 53. And Brady Williams is out there with Egan's, Hayes Camp, and the Willinghams. Guy Reese has it right wing. Back to the top to Malik. A long three top of the key just rattles in and out. Rebound. Nice. Hayes Camp puts it up. No oh. good. A lot of contact. No whistle. And finally corralled by the Wonder Bulls. 11.45 oh. to go, 60 to 53. Minnesota State up by seven. Gotta love the intensity of the NCAA tournament. Cameron at the top of the key. On that left wing, hands it out to Peter. Peter for three. His shot is short. Rebound pulled down by Hayes Camp. Peter with just five points, two of seven shooting for the Great American Conference Player of the Year. Malik Willingham, his running layup is swatted out of bounds. And Minnesota State will keep the basketball. Timeout on the floor will take one as well. It's the Central Regional of the NCAA Tournament. Second-ranked Minnesota State, the top seed in the region. They lead the number eight seed, Arkansas Tech, by seven, 60-53. to 53. We're back in 30 on the fan, Mankato.
Aaron Worm and Rick Gentilo with you here on the Fan Man Cato. Minnesota staying up by seven thanks to a three-point shooting. And Rick, we said this, or we have said this throughout the year. We know Malik Willingham is the focal point for any team on defense, but man, there's just so many weapons. And again, Egan's with 14, Peters with 14. Again, pick your poison. Someone's going to eventually, I guess, burn you. And that's what's happened here in the second yeah, half. And the Mavericks did a really good job. Justin Egan's got his last three because he set a back screen and they tried to help. And that's how he got open. It's really good job by the Mavericks of kind of spreading out the floor and setting some screens to get their shooters open that they didn't do in the first half. And I think that's why they have the lead. But, man, 11-24 is a long time to go. But isn't it cool when the intensity of a game is so much different than it was like a month ago? It's just, it's just fun. In men's hockey, that game is now no nut time. Minnesota State still up 3-2, four and a half minutes to go. And Peters goes up with it left block. He's hammered, so a couple of free throws coming up for Dylan Peters. And out of the timeout. I wonder how many times this year the Mavericks have scored on offense out of a timeout because they cleared out the left side of the floor, set a ball screen and rolled it. And Dylan Peters is such a good roller to the basket, and he takes it so strong, and he shoots, he shoots a ton of free throws because he's so good at it. I have to ask, is it Coach Morgan Thaler or Coach Schott that's running up those out-of-bones plays at the time all? Because, again, they're very effective. It's, it's ridiculous. I mean, I've said that for 20 years about how good those two are together. And, you know, Mike Schott's so good offensively and, and stuff. They, they're just so good out of timeouts and out of, like, the start of a half. I mean, I, their percentage of scoring has got to be ridiculously high. So the falls on Peter. That's his second. Dylan Peters knocks down both. Dylan now perfect. Six of six from the free throw line. 16 points, six rebounds for Dylan. The lead is nine. Minnesota State is led by as many as 10. 11 11 to go. Then Schaefer trying to kick it in the corner. Last touch by Malik Willingham. Yeah, Mark Downey, the head coach, Arkansas Tech, very animated. I kind of lose my vision every once in a while. Because he comes flying down to right yeah, in front of our yeah. broadcast location. Peter, top of the key to Schaefer. Schaefer in between the circles. Schaefer at the left elbow. Swings it right side for three. That shot's no good. Hayes Camp comes down with the rebound. Camerad missing the three. 62-53. Minnesota State trying to push it to their biggest lead of the game with 10.50 to go. Mavericks up by nine. Malik Willingham with 10 points. Four of 15 shooting for Malik. Trying to get to the Peters on a cut and turned it over. They saw that pass coming. Camerad with a steal. Speaking to Camerad, puts it up. Right block shot, no good. Tapped off to the top of the key to Mitchell. Mitchell back to Schaefer. Schaefer looking for a screen. Now on the top of the key, Schaefer for three. His three-pointer is no good in and out. Malik Willingham comes down with the rebound. Minnesota State up by nine, 62-53, 10 19 to go in front of a packed house. Over 4,000 in attendance here at Breslin Arena at Taylor Center. Kyrie says at top of the key, hands it off to Elijah. Back to Kyrie sliding in. Give and go for an easy two. And that's been that's been their halftime adjustment. It's uh, too high. They call it a chin series where they got two guys high. And they've been just really, really good at it. And if you're Arkansas Tech, you're going to have to figure out how to guard that because they haven't done a very good job the first five minutes or so. Minnesota State, their biggest lead of the game. They're up by 11, 64-53. Checking in down in Oklahoma, Bethany, Oklahoma, Minnesota State women's basketball. They're up by eight, 52-44, 348 to go third quarter. Maverick 